suppose it's a trite question, but how are you feeling? <laughs> no, it's not trite at all. Um, I feel thrilled. And I think I speak for millions of people around the world when I say we are thrilled. Um, it, it's been such a long time coming and then suddenly to just uh, come out of the blue. Uh, you know, something was obviously afoot. Uh, there'd obviously been a significant shift in the attitude and the activity level of the Australian government this year, probably from about February. But still, it was not until that Reuters article leaked out of the US, I think, uh, uh, two mornings ago, that we knew what was afoot. This was very much a political solution to a complex problem. Uh, it was a highly complex problem uh, involving three governments, obviously, the United States, the United Kingdom and Australia. Um, uh, and the governments themselves had to be mindful of the uh, jurisdiction of various departments, like the White House was very reluctant to interfere in a US Department of Justice matter. Um, uh, so many layers to this. So, so many layers to this. But uh, although a succession of Australian governments were either inactive or quite hostile to Julian Assange, uh, it was a delight to see this government, um, who I think were always interested in it, but, uh, and it took a little while for them to mobilise, but they really delivered in the end. What would you say uh, was the crucial kind of moment, the turning point in terms of being able to negotiate a plea deal? Was that something that had been spoken over, about, about the, over the past few years? Of course, there'd been oh, pressure to, to just simply drop the case and allow him to come home. Uh, was a plea deal something that had been discussed over many years? Yes, a plea deal was always a possibility. And in fact, when um, the co-chairs of the parliamentary Julian Assange group, when we met at the US Embassy last year with the US Ambassador Caroline Kennedy, she made it quite clear to us then that uh, the US government was open to some sort of uh, compromise. Um, I suppose the question in my head, talking frankly, was whether or not Julian would be prepared to accept a plea deal. I mean, he has invested so much in this emotionally, physically, personally, reputationally. Uh, would he be prepared to plead guilty to something? Uh, I suspect in his heart he didn't want to plead guilty to anything. But I don't blame him for pleading guilty to one offence because that was his only option. It was the only way to break the deadlock. Um, the problem we now have is we have a precedent, precedent in the US of a journalist being charged and convicted for doing their job. Um, that's a, that's a, uh, an alarming precedent which should send chills down the spine of journalists around the world. You know, it's one thing for a journalist in an authoritarian country to be jailed, and there's about 500 journalists around the world currently in jail or incarcerated in some way. Uh, it's not the sort of thing that ha should happen in the US. Um, so I think there's uh, more work to be done by people like me to push, just keep pushing for media freedom and enshrining it in law. Of course, the problem in the US, it is enshrined in law, in the First Amendment to the US Constitution. That was always one of the bizarre dimensions of this and one of the reasons that the US should never have charged Julian in the first place uh, and they should have dropped all the charges and just let him come home. Because, to my eye, uh, what happened... Uh, uh, just yesterday in the court was at odds with the US Constitution. The US uh, government and some officials speaking to ABC have said that they believe that lives were endangered, that this was something that uh, was an irresponsible path for Mr Assange to take. Can you understand that there'll be people that still feel somewhat ambivalent about his arrival yeah, look, in Australia? Can, can I make a couple of points in response to that? Yes, there is a range of views about Julian Assange. Even in the parliamentary Julian Assange group, which I co-chair, which has 47 members, there's a range of views. There, there are people in that group, colleagues of mine, who have no time for Julian Assange, but they still uh, have an acute sense of justice and how process should unfold. Uh, or just simply they think this has gone on long enough. I mean, even Peter Dutton last year said in the parliament, this has gone on long enough. Um, uh, as far as endangering people... This is one of those points that is so muddled up with misinformation and disinformation. The fact of the matter is that after the leaks, both the US government and the Australian government conducted inquiries into the implications of the leaks. In Australia, it was done by the Department of Defence. And in both the United States and Australia, those inquiries found that no one was endangered by the leaks. So for this to be to be trawled up and dug up and used against him again and again and again, it's, it just doesn't. Uh, it, it just is inconsistent with the truth.